John Dummerie, you found me. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Beautiful. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Beautiful. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? It does feel like the end of the week. It's so magical, the white falling against the black. Trust me, you do. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up. One by one. Besides, I've got to run. Just look at it. It's a beautiful night. Who's going to stay in on a night like this? He's right. Only losers go to bed early. Time to break out the booze. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club, music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly, and as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, all right? And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him.
You have acquired the robe. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. My name is Charles Vildroin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What a drag. He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Oh, yes. My friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where I came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. That's really all I can tell you about it. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Because I did it? <laughs> officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. No, no. I mean, it was so strange. I could barely believe what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. I went back inside. Yes, back inside. Keep yourself safe from the killing. Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Those funny... Oh... Officer, that kind of language is unbecoming of an officer of the RCM. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. All I can say is that it was late. No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day.
I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance. The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Ah, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Yes, as I said before, I am a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Intern is joking or not. La Communauté Internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. It is the most important thing. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Take your daily bread, for example. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. It's the International Organization for Moralists, hence Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. But of course. Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé, Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. Rivachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. 
You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Is this option D usually the most reasonable answer? Sounds like you're a moralist indeed, my friend. Welcome. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, realistic, and level-headed, an ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? It looks to me like you are. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? What's there to say? Sur la clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal is only one of its many darlings, whose progress it supports and cherishes. Darlings? That can't be an official designation. Because a great percentage of Revachal's culture hails from sur la clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Oranier is an exemplary nation who, as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to Sur la Clé, Oranier is probably the most prominent member of the international community. As founding members, they are both very EPIS. Oranier carries a lot of political weight, while Sur la Clé takes care of the business side of things. Sur la Clé hosts the headquarters of the major EPIS institutions. Oranje's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to advanced services and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. But that didn't tell you anything about Aranye. About what? Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. Their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time, the people are polite and efficient. Like I said, they are an example for less emerged nations to follow. Whatever you wish, officer. Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral in turn as a whole. 
It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very excited to take it to the next level. A supranational political alliance, the United States of Occident. You mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Except that candidate members never become full members, do they? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night, civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society for adults. I hear they're oodles of fun. I used to have a flyer for one, but... But now that I start thinking of it, it was for an improv class anyway. It's this funny theater thing, you know? Very creative. <laughs> Helps relieve stress. A chill runs down your spine as you envision a half dozen people in professional attire standing around a chair, awkwardly pretending to be waiting for a motor bus. It's neither funny nor creative. Sorry, who? But I told you, officer, he's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. I'm just enjoying the view. Listen. The Insulindian Bay. This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words.
I'm all ears, officer. A moment, officer. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. on your mind. Dead body, 
Spirit entered. What is there to talk of? The mass murderer? Why? Okay. Sure, the crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubis built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. Not like a literal sarcophagus. I'm just being metaphorical. Encasement, confinement, of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. I don't know, and it's not something they properly understood either, or it does, but it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. It will be fruitless though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. The wood creaks as a gale blows by, outside. Dust particles fall through the darkness, settling down on the age-bleached floorboards. The structure does not feel particularly durable. Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like substance. No, it's pretty fucking unsound if you ask me. They should have built a club for a nodic music around it instead. Anodic music will definitely contain whatever we're dealing with. And if it can't, well... Like a concentric ring spreading out, the struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited sire person. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our science synced. It's short for paranoid. A 
reasonable question. Say I get hurt. I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyse the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. Ah, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and colour. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. I don't have a top ten list of things I'm most suspicious of. But if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment. The pig wheat paradigm. Something is off here. You feel like it should be the other way around. It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. Correct. Mental illness is a term the powers use to homogenize people. I think I don't reach mental illness. I am merely politically ill. A suspicious element. No, politics is an inert complex of daily corruption and inane think pieces. The real paradigm is economic and it concerns pig and wheat. This is where the innovation happens. It's only a theory. I suspect they're breeding a pig wheat hybrid, probably in Grad. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong questions. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray, far from our true lives, but we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. His eyes flicker. The life is true if it's free from fear, an eternal division among oneself. In others, mankind has seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come, a return to trueness. It will be hardcore. Beats and bright lights to shatter falsehoods. Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on. Worriedly. The young man is dead serious about this. Rejection of the right-left axis. Emphasis on unity. Appreciation of some primordial mode of being. What does that remind you of? Nationalism, militarism, racism, an emphasis on a leader character are totally absent in hardcore. He picks up a wrench and scratches his head with it, unaroused by fascism. Me 
Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their art. Thus, they are closer to true hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them, and they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. Lord of the Western Plain, it is really happening right here. The migrants are contaminating our youth. Utmost dedication, thoughts from the spinal cord, is a potent superlative as well. The term also signifies certain varieties of pornography that depict penetration, just so you know. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore. He just really likes saying hardcore. Hardcore! That's a pretty hardcore coincidence, don't you think? Yeah! Oh yeah, sure thing. You know what I think? I think man, woman, and child are arbitrary divisions which serve to bind humanity to serve them. They're just clothes. It's just a style, you know, normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. Yo, man, what's on your mind? Aggressive, monotonous, but also somehow sacrum, primitive, yet futuristic, like a machine man. Nothing exists but the here and now. All are one, one purpose. All you've managed is a list. The parts don't form a whole. This young man adds a capital G before the H in his Yeds and Args. 
This produces a guttural Gottwaldian accent and makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's not Gottwaldian. Maybe it's Oranese. Probably an homage to Oranje, where Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? You know about him? You know Van Eyck? Wow! The skinny wraith looks at you with some disbelief. So am I! So am I! Why they call you Egghead? Because... Egghead to the mega! The K became the G! The boy became the man! The Advent? to the mixer into the speakers. Swallow, you mean? What about it? Great. Thanks. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. On the table, you see a bowl of water. Rough soap. 
The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on Faraday. On and on it goes, for untold hours, at the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising, rising, above the dark curvature, the great wingspan of sleep, studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again, Harrister, a ceaseless agent, picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. For the money, baby. For the greater good. For Revacon, always and only 
Rivercon. Solving your little crossword puzzles, doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. He's got no idea what he's in for. It's ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Do it for the wind. Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. It's a suspicion, or a feeling really, that things are not quite in hand around here. Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly out of control. The center isn't holding, and despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, Things only seem to be getting worse. Oh sure, you've been making progress on your case, interviewing people, solving side tasks. But who's focusing on the big questions? But have you ever seen them? How do you know they're even there? More importantly, how do you know they aren't waiting for your participation? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. The most awesome, terrible thing. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. La Responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues. The Human Welfare Index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can't simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by a legitimate authority. Like a committee. You don't need no stinking committee. You're the law. Really, Harry, you know in your lungs that true authority flows from institutions, not individuals. That's the single principle that separates civilization from barbarism. Technicalities. If you want your work to be accepted, you have to go through the appropriate process. There is always time to follow best practices. Once someone's decided to cut corners for the sake of expediency, who knows what else they're capable of? Mass executions. 
Fun stuff. That's what they're capable of. Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. <laughs>